are you wishing our other friends a Merry Christmas? Yeah, Rob, I'm uh, wishing my buds a Happy Holidays. Wish they were here, though. Would have been pretty freaking sweet to have the whole crew here. But then again, there's always uh, New Year's weekend, which probably be a lot of fun. I am so glad that Thomas finally got me out of that freaking box. I'll say. Cause, like, you've been there for like months now, man. Well, better late than never. I am so glad people are not looking at me like I'm fucking crazy right now talking to a robot. That was not my fault. I was forced to do that from my past program. Like, I mean, at least you're not AI generated. <laughs> oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Ah, just about done. Whew. Hey, Tom. What's up, dude? Isn't there a movie that we should be playing around this time? Because I know that's like our tradition every time we have these Christmas hangouts. Yeah, it's true, but there is another certain Christmas movie that I have in mind that is also on the same level. I'm like, you're thinking what I'm thinking, aren't you? Yeah, and I have the movie right here. My man. Speaking of which, I think it's time to end this debate once and for all. I'm like, oh, don't, don't, I'm like, dude, don't tell me people are still talking about that. Yep. Look at this, let me guess, the reason is all because Bruce Willis said it, it wasn't, it means it's not. <laughs> He said it at his fucking roast. Do people really take a roast that seriously? Who knows? Everyone takes everything seriously on the internet. What's so, uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, it's just a fly in the ointment, Sean. Monkey in a wrench. Pain in the ass. Oh look. Oh look. Made a sense of game where you on the horizon. Okay then, um, I'm just gonna chill here for a while, right? Thomas the Retro Nerd reviewing the game is good or Bruce Willis, Die Hard. Oh yes, Die Hard is one of those action movies that is so manly, awesome, and overwhelmingly exciting that saying the title's name quadruples your testosterone levels. Yeah, Die Hard. Fuck yeah! Oh, wait a minute. I just remember something. Bruce Willis made a guest appearance on Friends. Yeah, oh, whatever. Die Hard! Released in 1988, it stars Bruce Willis as John McClane, a New York cop visiting LA to see his family for Christmas. He took a limo ride to the Nakatomi Plaza where his wife Holly is attending the party. The two are happy for one another, though their relationship can be rocky. Meanwhile, a group of German terrorists stormed in and held the partygoers, led by Hans Gruber, who was brilliantly played by the late Alan Rickman. John managed to escape, so he had to go through so much hell to signal the police, find off the terrorists, and get the hostages out. And this is the absolute best Christmas movie ever made. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> <sighs> I hate this argument. I'll get to this later, but I gotta continue reviewing the movie. The story of this movie was based on the Roger Thorpe novel, Nothing Lasts Forever, which is a sequel to his previous novel, The Detective. Frank Sinatra starred in the film adaptation and it was a big hit in 1968. 
When Nothing Lasts Forever was being developed into a movie, Bruce Willis was never the first choice. Originally, Sinatra was asked to return, but he declined since he was 64 when offered. Then Fox was desperate for Arnold Schwarzenegger, however, he wasn't interested and not too keen on doing sequels at the time, mainly because they wanted to make it as a sequel to Commando. Then they searched with Sylvester Stallone, Richard Gere, and even Mel Gibson of all people, until Willis gets the role of John McClane. Good thing too, since his likable charm makes the movie work. And that's what differs from other action movies. You make your lead likable, and put him through hell! I say that because other action films have the main star not breaking a sweat. Sans Commando, as I mentioned earlier. That's one of my favorites. So, with the success of Die Hard, naturally there are sequels. Almost became another series that refused to die, until 10 years later when Die Hard 5 killed it. Ugh, I regret watching that movie in theaters. Naturally, there are some video games based on the movies, though I am not reviewing Die Hard the Arcade Game or Die Hard Trilogy. The one I'm reviewing is the NES game. Now, I got a couple of red flags showing you by my cartridge. Red flag number one, the cover reminds sensitive people of 9-11. I'm not pulling punches because that's exactly what people would see it as. Red flag number two, the shell of the cartridge is transparent red. Yes, this is a reproduced copy because I refuse to spend 200 plus dollars on a game that I may or may not like for the sake of this review. Obviously, the game failed mainly because it was released in 1992 in North America. Way to go, Activision. Is this game really that bad? Well, I'm about to find out right now. So we put up the game and... What in the world? Wow! That is the best title music I have ever heard! Anyway, the game begins on the 32nd floor where- HOLY HELL! <gasps> right off the bat, the game punches you in the face by forcing the action as you start moving. Yeah, the game starts off with John escaping the terrorists up to the 32nd floor. The game's main goal is to kill the crooks and free the hostages. As you can see, the game uses an overhead view. You can move around with the D-pad, fire with the A button, and do other actions with the B button, like running. As you make it to the first enemy, he floods the screen with bullets so you won't get close enough to shoot him! For playing this game, shooting at enemies is stiff, straight or 45 degree angle. It's annoying and it could drain your life meter in a minute! If you're out of life, that's it. Game over, and you have to start from the beginning again. This game can tell you right away that it doesn't treat the player with any mercy. Nevertheless, once you kill the crook with a machine gun, you will gain access to a radio. Wait, that was supposed to be Tony from the movie? Well, now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Now with the radio, you listen to when Hans is sending the terrorists after you. I usually just stay in front of the elevator and just blast his ass as he steps out. Let's pause to the status screen and see what we have here. We have a life bar, an ammo count, along with some other weapons that you take from the crooks, like flashbangs. As you can see, after killing a couple of crooks, there are a total of 40 crooks to fight. That is a bit crazy, as I recall, there are 13 terrorists in the movie. Well, I guess they changed it to 40 to make the game less boring. I also noticed there is a foot meter. Why is there a foot meter? It turns out when you walk around for a while, or walk on some broken glass, it drains your foot meter. I can understand what they're going for, since if you remember near the end of the movie, John's feet got fucked up, and at the end, he's limping in pain. It's fine that they added elements from the movie, but there comes a time when you have to take it easy and make the game fun to begin with. Is it even sadder when the developers make the game follow too much like the movie? Lastly, there are these locks. As you play through the game, one of the locks deactivates. My guess is that if all the locks are deactivated, it can't be good. In this game, you gotta do a lot of exploring throughout the five available floors when you start. You can take the stairs or elevators to send you to the floors in this game. The 30th floor is off limits since that's where the hostages are located, and you don't want to screw up the mission. You can even go through the air decks as well. As you explore through the vapid darkness through these floors, you can find power-ups and other objects. Finding soda cans refills your life bar. One block at a time... What? I do love the vending machines. Just shooting them to get multiple cans. You need them to stay alive. You can also find first aid kits that'll heal up your foot meter. Very useful. There are also some C4 explosives scattered around. 
Once you find Heinrich and kill him, you gain access to the detonators. You can now use the T4 against the crooks. Oh no, I did not just drop one! Oh shit! Yeah, don't be an idiot like me. So by exploring the 35th floor, we can find a rocket for a rocket launcher, as well as a map to the mysterious 5th floor to blow up the main computer. The actions during your current playthrough affects the game's outcome. You have to navigate the 35th floor to find that one crook with the key to gain access to the roof. Then you have to contact the police about the terrorist attack at Nakatomi. While exploring the roof, I noticed this locker with the fire hose. I tried selecting it, and John said, I have to be desperate to tie that on and jump off. No thanks. Then it is true. So this is a call forward to near the end of the film when Hans blew the roof, and John had no choice but to jump off. Best stunt in the film, by the way. It's kind of odd that the game denies a request because you're not supposed to do it right now. Anyway, out of all the floors in this game, Floor 33 is the worst because of the amount of crooks you have to fight. No mercy is shown here. However, if you manage to survive this and make your way through this sort of maze, you can get to the computer to activate the express elevator for the suspicious fourth floor. Yet the map says it's for the fifth floor. CONSISTENCY GAME! Anyway, we pull out the map, we find the main computer, and the rocket launcher, and... Geronimo, motherfucker! Oh, shit! Fuck was that? Hey Tom, you're right over there. Uh, feels like I made a police deputy look like he got butt fucked on national TV, Sean. Didn't need to know that. After Theo shuts down the second lock, the express elevator is out at the moment. Sometime in the game, when Hans realizes you're hearing him, also when the police arrive, Al Powell will give you a better hand on where the crooks are. Okay, go ahead and make a Carl Winslow reference if you want. I just don't want to be redundant. At some point when you navigate through the floors, you can accidentally shoot the window and fall out. That's stupid! Then when you slay through more crooks, the police tanker gets blown up in smoke and that's just fucking out of nowhere! Afterwards, all that's left is killing the rest of the crooks. Once the number reaches three, then the FBI cuts the power. Here, you now have access to the 30th floor to finish the job. Make it to the vault and... There you are, Hans! It's time to make you... Die hard! Happy trails, Hans! After defeating Hans, the game ends just like how it is in the movie. Nothing else to say here. Graphically, the overhead view doesn't work in my opinion. John looks like a stiff toy when he walks around. However, some of the floors do have the details from the movie, and it looks fine. On the 31st floor, HA! See, the program has put a big Christmas tree on one of the floors! It stares right you in the face! Yeah, and there's barely stuff on the 33rd floor. I know it's under construction, but come on. The soundtrack is limited. Sure, I did say that the title theme is epic as hell. <laughs> then there is the music where you're wandering around through the floors. You hear it throughout the majority of the game, but it gets interrupted once you fight some of the crooks. That can get annoying. Oh, and don't even get me started with their butchering to Ode to Joy. Beethoven is rolling in his grave. However, nothing can be said about the difficulty. Pure chaos when you try to survive here. It's like a fucking bloodbath. There's guys coming out of the corner, guys coming out of the elevator, and guys when you enter a room. The difficulty is too much. Even in the beginner setting, it's still too hard. This game is so hard, it puts you through hell on earth in a basket, just like the real John McClane. Wait, is that it? Is that why the game was programmed that hard? Just to make you feel how John went through in the movie? I need a Pepsi, this is too much. Did the game say I know too much? How is that even possible? It's just a video game! How would I know my every move? Now what? <laughs> Prepare to die! Oh shit. Did you manage to get a 
a couple shots on him? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Think, goddammit, think! Are there more of these guys? Uh, I hope it's the only one. But I don't want to jinx it. Good call, good call. But, I just have a hunch, maybe uh, like one or two more could be showing up. Uh, you wanna check out the front? Yeah. Get on that one. Son of a bitch, I'm gonna kill you. Relax, relax. I'm not gonna do anything anymore. And you suck. Yeah, right. That's right. Ah! 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 More than that. To show me, asshole. With pleasure. Happy channels, dickhead. You think you can get out of this cowboy? Get the KA, motherfucker! If this is how John McClane did Christmas, then I wonder what the fuck he does for New Year's. <laughs> oh, man. How you holding up? Oh, man. My heart is racing after killing this motherfucker. If you just saw the motherfucker I took care of outside. Wait, you too? Yeah. Is it me, or did we just wake up in some 80s action movie? Sean, I do not want to go into the details of that right now. Are you going to install the new security system? Oh. Rob, put that on the list for next year. Final verdict, I would say Die Hard on the NES is okay. If you're curious about it, I don't mind it. But if you don't want a hard time, I say skip this game. And now, the final thing I do want to mention is that the stupid debate that everyone keeps bringing up on the internet every Christmas. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. If you keep watching the movie, you see elements of people saying Merry Christmas, you see Christmas trees, you see decorations, you hear a lot of references, Christmas music. Oh my God, it's a Christmas movie. Why can't we just accept it and move on with our lives? But no, the internet wants to find its bullshit excuses just to keep this going on until the day we die! Ugh, I'm sorry guys, I needed that because this is just really annoying. Can we just all accept it as a Christmassy action movie and just move on? I would. Well, that about wraps up our Christmas video and for 2023. I hope you guys have enjoyed this year uh, of uh, production that we have, but uh... Some of the stuff that we have done uh, wasn't what we planned. Right, dude? Yep. And um, stay tuned for new episodes in 2024, which will be uh, better than ever. Yeah, we got plenty of other projects that we weren't able to do this year, but we could actually pull it off for next year. But until then, I am Thomas the Retro Nerd. And I'm Sean the, the Comic Warrior. We're here to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in 2024. Yeah. Rock on, dudes. Uh, as right now, ready to rewatch this movie? You just read my mind, brother. Let's go! Alright!